Okay, now we're going to talk about Apollo 12. Apollo 11 paved the way to Apollo 12. Apollo 11 was the last developmental mission. Apollo 12 was the first operational. Okay, it's ironic that Apollo 11 had two Air Force officers and a civilian, and they landed in the Sea of Tranquility. Apollo 12 had three Navy commanders, Conrad, Gordon, and Bean, and their targeted landing point was the Ocean of Storms. So it's good we got the Navy guys to take on the heavy seas. <clears throat> okay, the crew, Pete Conrad, they were all promoted to captain while they were on board the Hornet. So Pete Conrad was the commander, command module pilot was Gordon, Ellen Bean, lunar module pilot. Uh, here it is, the liftoff in November of 69, ocean of storms, two EVAs they did. Again, it's seven hours and 45 minutes. First operational lunar mission and the splashdown, <clears throat> 24 November. Again, the USS Hornet was called upon to be the recovery ship. Here is the liftoff. Eight point nine seconds, ignition sequence will start. Now, what was unique about Apollo 12 is you saw the weather at the Cape. It was not clear blue skies. Apollo 12 actually was hit by lightning twice in the early portion. 36 sec seconds after liftoff, the first strike uh, occurred. And in the command module, the fuel cells all dropped off, and they provide power to the command module. The command module instrumentation was lost in mission control. The command module was on backup battery power, but the Saturn V trucked on. It was unaffected by the lightning bolt, and Werner von Braun insisted that the instrumentation section of the uh, booster fly the booster and not the command module, and he was very wise to do that. If this wasn't bad enough, the second strike occurred 52 seconds, and that interrupted the re attitude reference data inside the command module. Fortunately, <clears throat> on console in mission control, there was an engineer called the Electrical, Environmental, and Consumables Manager, the EECOM. And he recognized what he saw on his screens because of an exercise that they did uh, before the launch. And he simply said, um, set SCE to AUX. He said, flight set SCE to AUX. And that put the s signal conditioning electronics into a backup power mode. Nobody knew what he meant. SCE to AUX, the Capcom told the, uh, the astronauts, set SCE to AUX, there's a switch on the panel. Crew did that and the fuel cells came back online and all data returned to normal at the 100 second point after liftoff because this EECOM had seen the signature of exactly this in an exercise, a training exercise that they accomplished. Saturn V continued to trundle on, just like they did in Apollo 11. <clears throat> Again, we have the same kind of things happening, course corrections, and this is the unique part about Apollo 12. They did in a precision landing. <clears throat> and Apollo 11, if you recall, um, 
Neil Armstrong had to actually maneuver through a rock field and landed several miles away from the targeted point. But with Apollo 12, we have we developed a way for a precision landing, and you're going to see why this is very important. On the lunar surface, the pinpoint landing technique was implemented. They used the Doppler shift pattern of the lunar module RF transmissions to continually adjust the landing point, and they landed 508 feet from Surveyor 3, which is where they wanted to be. This is Surveyor 3. Remember I told you about the surveyors? Here it is. And there's the lunar module right here. That's, pre that's precision pinpoint landing. And here they're taking some pieces of, of Surveyor 3 into the lunar module. But this is <clears throat> a, an achievement that was used on all other uh, landing missions in the Apollo program. Two EVAs, 7 hours, 45 minutes. They returned 75 pounds. Here's where they went on, on the lunar surface. And they were doing this all on foot. First they set up the experiments, and then they went on this trek to Surveyor 3, take the pieces, and then bring them back to the, uh, the uh, lunar module. So two EVAs. After that, the same things happen as I talked about before. They get back into the command module in lunar orbit. Same things happen here. Course correction, separation, then you're at your .05G point where the Apollo guidance computer takes over. And <clears throat> the only difference now is recovery timeline. 8.30 second, the uh, Hornet launched the uh, air assets, splashed down 9.55, two miles from the Hornet. First UDT diver, just like an Apollo 11, contamination specialist, but he implemented relaxed protocols. You can see here they're in very comfortable clothes, not wearing biological isolation garments. And then at 11.05, the astronauts entered the MQF on the Hornet. And here they are in the uh, hangar deck of the Hornet in relaxed protocol garments. And now they're inside the uh, MQF being addressed by the captain. <clears throat> this is a great shot. This is the Hornet approaching the command module to recover the command module. <clears throat> Then the MQF was airlifted to Johnson, just like in Apollo 11. The uh, astronauts remained in their uh, comfortable quarters for the remaining 11 days. And again, the Hornet executed perfectly in terms of the recovery of the Apollo 12. 23 open water CM recoveries in different weather conditions and 12, 20 astronaut simulated recoveries and Apollo 12 reentry, recovery, and quarantine were perfectly executed just like on Apollo 11.